Hi, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I've been teaching art since my daughter has been in kindergarten. Um, I've been homeschooling her pretty much since, you know, pre-K, kindergarten, and she's gonna be in fourth grade uh, this coming year. And I actually have a degree in art. Um, I have a BFA in visual arts, and I actually um, didn't complete the process to get certified, but I completed the testing and I took some courses. Um, I just didn't get hired because it's really hard to get an art teacher position, but that was kind of what I wanted to do in my life. I wanted to teach art, but you know, with one art teacher, usually per school, if even, it's really difficult. So um, I kind of gave up on pursuing that, but I did, um, you know, learn about a lot of things. And so one thing I really did in the beginning from probably pre-K all the way through I don't know, maybe like first or second was we pretty much did only process over product art. And you're probably familiar with that term, but basically it's like, um, it's the process of making the art, like even just something like, as like people would say, like finger painting, just even like, fin like painting with red, but you don't like tell the child what to paint, what, you know. So it's just like manipulating materials, like the process. Um, so we pretty much did a lot of that. I bought this book um, for that. It's a big book of paint and sticking. It's an older book, but I didn't use all the ideas in it because some are definitely not process over product, but I really liked the beginning about how it talks about the color mixing. And we did do a lot of color mixing so she could learn the primary colors. So the color mixing is a little bit more like technique, but if you do it in a fun way, to me it's still learning, but you know, you do it in a fun way. So I, we did a lot of like color mixing. I like how it has that, and then I like how it has just real simple projects of um, just using like a dry brush, stippling, rolling and combing, using like cardboard, um, newspaper crumble, painting, painting with objects. We did a lot of stuff like that. Splattering. So I got, I got some ideas from this book. Yeah. So I do recommend it. I mean, like I said, I kind of just picked and choose and change some of the things like draw with glue that's also a really simple process over product um you know like we didn't do the tree of life stencil which is a little bit more you know non-processed but cloth painting just using materials around your house um but yeah some of the stuff like i said is more useful than others but that's pretty much every book right and we didn't really do a lot of stuff in the end like it's more crafts and stuff but I actually like bought this book at like a thrift store. I'll link it if I can find. And then we kind of like I made up, I kind of like made up a lot of my own art projects. And then I kind of wanted her to learn more about the elements of art. Maybe we started that I think in first grade. So this is like um, Evan Moore, How to Teach Art to Children. This has probably been like my favorite um, art curriculum book that I've ever bought. Because when I studied art in college, it was a lot about the elements and design, and I took design classes and stuff too. So I really wanted her to understand, because like when you're talking about art, um, it's important to know the elements. And like I said, this this could be like it says one through six, and it really could work for one. You could use this pretty much even in like higher grades, I think, because if your child hasn't learned this, I think any age you could do this. So. For this, we didn't like do the stuff in the book. Um, usually what we did instead of printing this, making a copy is I would just have her do stuff like this in her sketchbook. So like this is perfect, like learning about the line, but then you're just making diagonal lines, different types of lines. So I really love how it focuses on every element and it has ideas. And almost every single idea is process over product in this book. And then what I would usually do is I would go to the li I would go on the library website and I would check out books that I could find that had to do with lines. So I know like they have various different picture books. Like I think Wave or Waves is one. Harold and the Purple Crayon. I didn't bring it. I forgot. But Harold and the Purple Crayon is a good one. So stuff like that. I would and then I would so we would read like Harold and the per Harold and the Purple Crayon while we were studying line and I would extend the line like I would extend each element for probably like two or more weeks. So yeah, um, we didn't really do a lot of the products uh, uh, projects in the back. We mainly just did the ones basically on the elements. So this book was very helpful for us. And then this one I bought on a recommendation from like a curriculum. 
It's artistic pursuits and an introduction to the visual arts, 32 lessons, grades K through three. I, to be honest with you, like I kept it, but I just never really got into it, but I still kind of like it. Um, it's like, I like how it has all the materials, everything you need, drawing, painting, paper art, and then clay. I like that, how it shows you everything. And we went ahead and we bought all of this stuff. I think we did this in like either first kindergarten or first or second, I forgot. Some of these are kind of mixed together because um, when those younger grades, we didn't do art for as long as we do now, but yeah. And so this one, has like different lessons and you and you read about it and then it's like talks about like look at the composition and then it has like a thing that you flip so the reason why I think this book wasn't as useful to me in the younger grades was because my daughter was kind of bored with reading it was, so it incorporates art history with projects and she wasn't really ready for the art history part so it's not that it's a bad book but I, I personally think that this is for older children like I don't I she we couldn't get into it in K through second and I kind of put it away and then like to be honest with you I might go back to it one day but I honestly think it'd be better for like third through fifth but that's just my opinion um but I just wanted to show you guys because I know this book a lot of homeschool people like I've seen other people have it and so it does incorporate art history like I said with projects which I don't know I, I'd rather just the projects and then do art history separate, but I don't know. There's like a million different ways to do something, but I still think it's cool. Um, like shapes, and then here's like where you do like a shape collage. So this is like process of a product. You know, you don't have to tell your child what collage to do if you don't want to, or you could, you know, I don't usually ever show her the example in the book. I just kind of I would just kind of some I would show her like the art history example but I wouldn't show her you know because I wanted her to just use her imagination so that's the third book and then this um art lab for kids this one same thing I kind of just like flip through it it's not like a curriculum it's more just like projects so here's all the sections on different mediums and this one we actually did a lot of the projects in here I think for third grade um, some of the projects have like a little bit more materials required that like I just didn't have or didn't want to buy. Um, but that's just me because I can be lazy about doing stuff like that. But it still has a lot of stuff you can do with what you have at home. Like this is just contour drawing, large ink drawings. And you don't like even for this, you could just say, oh, let's draw with ink. It doesn't necessarily have to be large, but I think it's good for kids to experiment drawing small scale and large scale. So I like how this book kind of reminded me of that. Um, yeah. Soft pastels. Let me see. Charcoal and watercolor. So it like encourages you to use different mediums. Like this is mixed media. Pop art collage. Torn paper landscapes. We definitely did this. But I didn't tell her to do a landscape. We just did a lot of torn paper collages. But you could do landscapes. You could do all these different things. We definitely did the leaf prints. We did the cardboard relief print. We did a lot of stuff. Print making. Yeah. So I think it's pretty cool. Okay. Now this one. This one is like very technical. This one's like for parents, teachers, educators to read. Okay. It's drawing with children. A course in enhancing creative capacity for children and adults. So this is not just for kids, it's for adults. And we did do this, I don't remember what grade, probably like, I don't know. Basically has all these little um, prompts and talks about how your kids basically learn, like basically the process of how a child, the stages of drawing, like how there's like distinct states. I want to say like the creative process by age. I haven't read it, you know, in a couple years. Um, but she kind of shows how she did lessons with different with the kids. And this is like the drawing before and then this is after. So I don't know, like I sometimes I, I like some kids, I think are more naturally gifted at drawing. And this book, though, breaks everything down. I mean, I know everyone can draw. She, oh yeah, one thing I really learned from this book, 
was that, um, you know, a lot of times when you're buying your kids' markers, almost all the little kids' markers are the big fat markers or like the, the typical Crayola markers where she suggested using fine um, markers. And so like, so broad tip markers are mainly for coloring in with. She also talks about how like buying kids like better made art supplies because, you know, um, you know, I mean, I mean, this isn't just for kids, like she does for adults. But so when I read this book, I actually bought my daughter a bunch of fine tip Sharpies. What's good about Sharpies is, or maybe they're ultra fine Sharpies. Let me grab one. So I bought my daughter a bunch of these because they're very inexpensive, especially for kids who like you go through these a lot in homeschool and art. They're ultra fine point Sharpies. And she didn't suggest these, but I just bought these on my own because they're inexpensive and they're waterproof. So you can actually use these under watercolor. And I actually use them on my own artwork under watercolor. So I actually bought my daughter these and she got really better at drawing um, with markers and pens when I started letting her use fine tip. And then, so basically it has like, you know, drawing exercises that you do. And you like, um, like it has like your, so we did this on a whiteboard. I like, I would draw, I would draw like, this is like the starting level. I would draw these shapes on our whiteboard and then she would um, draw it. And then, so it's kind of just like, this is for someone who like is like hardcore into like art education. I would say most people probably, I don't know, like, cause I have an art degree. So I, I like kind of reading about this stuff, but some people it just might not be for you, but that's what I'm talking about. So you guys can check it out. Um, but yeah, and then she also talks about the elements and here's like an example of something your child would draw. And so, yeah, and it has like, so it does have examples that your child draw. This isn't really process of a product. It's more like technical. But my daughter really likes drawing, so this book is kind of hard for me to explain, so I hope I'm explaining it correctly. Like, it's just supposed to help you um, draw better. Yeah. And she shows, like, before and after. I think it was a fun exercise to do. Okay, so those are, the, those are like, the technique books that I've used. And let me see... So what I'm using for fourth grade, and um, I mentioned this in my fourth grade curriculum video, but I'm gonna show it again real quick. So those are all my technique books. The rest of my books are more art history and some picture books. And so this is Us Born Activities 365 Things to Draw and Paint. So I wanna say, so when my daughter um, was in third grade, we really didn't use those books. We, we um, I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. We actually did a, um, well, no, I take that back. We did use some of this, these projects, and then I kind of just like made up a lot of my own like process of a product pro um, projects for her. And then we did a workbook, which I'm going to show you guys. And then, so this is what I got for fourth grade. So since my daughter turned nine, her drawing stage and her um, ability to, you know, dexterity, coordination, all of that stuff, the older a child gets, the more they can grip things and things like that. And so their drawing obviously gets, you know, better. So when she turned like eight, she, her drawing went like just crazy, like crazy good. Like she, she's really gifted at drawing also. My husband and I both draw. And so I decided to stop doing process, process over product with her. And I decided that she could benefit from more technical and more like, um, like drawing um, ideas. So now we're not really doing process of her product for fourth grade. We're just doing this. And here's the table of contents. And um, I will link everything also in the video for you guys in the description. Okay, and then so basically what we're gonna do is like the first one is drawing dogs and it's like um, 10 different draw dogs. So what we're gonna do is each week we're gonna do a two page spread. Instead of doing one every day because we don't do homeschool, you know, like on the weekends and we don't do homeschool, typical homeschool on Fridays. We do like different things on Fridays. So 
um, we're gonna break this up by the week. So one week we'll, she'll draw dogs, the next week she'll do the sharks, the city. So I'm gonna have her do some of these exercises in her sketchbook and then probably either on Thursday, I said maybe not on Friday. In the first few weeks of homeschool, I, I kind of like sort, I change things. So on like Monday through Thursday, she'll draw, I got this sketchbook. This is just like a plain, um, you know, sketchbook. I like to buy these, just like the hardback black ones because they uh, last longer and you can keep them forever. Well, you know, hopefully. <laughs> um, and then I did like, you know, this, this is like thicker paper. Okay. So she'll be using this Monday through like Thursday and then she'll do one of these dogs that's like her favorite one on like Friday or say for example. And she'll do that on like a different medium paper or like she'll either do it in clay or she'll do it like watercolor. I got this pad by Strathmore. Um, she has, we have other watercolor paper. So whatever she wants, whatever medium she wants to do we'll go ahead and um, get influence from this book for the idea, but then she'll have artistic create, like Christic, sorry, artistic freedom to take the idea of the dog and do it however she wants, collage, painting, you know, ceram uh, clay, um, whatever, watercolor or acrylic, acrylic. So yeah, let me just show you this now since I've rambled enough. And, and nothing's wrong with not doing process over product. If you like more um, directive art ideas, then you might like this book for even younger kids. I think this book could work for like pre-K, you know, plus. Like, I don't think there's like an age group for this. Okay. Now, what we did for third grade alongside some of the other books I showed you, um, the art lab was this. We did an art master class with Vincent Van Gogh by Wide Eyed. So this took a while because I didn't rush her. She only did one. So it is some art history, which I liked. And then she only did one of these, usually like one page a week. So maybe like one week she'd do this, the next week she'd do that. And then this is like also learning about the elements and also kind of process of a product and technique. And then, so yeah, so she, this is what she did. I like the, I like color studies. And this, I, I told her she didn't have to draw the sunflowers. I mean, that was the point, but I still just wanted her to do something with flowers. So I didn't have her copy the sunflowers. Um, self-portrait she's really good at drawing she her portraits are amazing amazing she can draw portraits i can't draw realism my drawings are way more weird i don't i don't know but anyway oh and it came with this like so it came with stickers which she didn't even use them yet and it came with this really cool poster like art history van gogh's paintings and then this was like her final masterpiece and yeah and she had the yellow and blue in the background, but she drew, she painted a plant. So that was what we did for third grade. And then I bought this, but we honestly never used it, but I think it's really cool. It sucks that I think it's outdated. I think these are hard to find, but this is Scholastic Voyages of Discovery. I would like to have had all of them. This is like number seven. We didn't start this yet because I think she'd be better at when she gets a little bit older. It's just a really cool book I found at a thrift store and it goes all into like history, the history of art with sculpture. And it has all these cool interactive things where you can feel like relief. And then it has like some projects and stuff kind of, but it's more like art history. And I really didn't think she'd be that interested in it in third or fourth grade. So I put it aside and yeah, it has like some interactive things that you cut out and stuff like put together or something so it doesn't really have yeah i said it has projects it doesn't really have projects it's just like i thought you could buy like some air dry clay and then kind of like do projects with it of your own like ideas and stuff like that so that's what my plan is we might do that as like a side project for fourth grade or fifth or something where i get her i like to just buy air dry white air dry clay 
it's the simplest thing to use for me for any like for for me for, for us for clay and it air dries so yeah anyway and it's just really cool and like it has stickers i don't even know if they still work it's like old um but i think they they're not all based on like art they have like i wish i could get this whole series but i haven't really looked on the internet and put this back later but yeah it's just kind of cool if you want if you're really interested in sculpture Okay, so going on to more art history now. We have um, the art the art book for children one and the art book for children book two. To be honest with you, we kind of just skipped around these. We never really stuck to them. I think I started these in like kindergarten or first grade, but she really just wasn't interested in art history. So these are books that like you could always go back to, like I think even high school, like I don't, I mean, it's really, I like how they, like, here's Pollock. And it's just, like, a little bit of information with um, the art history aspect. And here, so here's his painting. So I think we're going to go back to these. She just really wasn't, I mean, of course, I took art history in college. And um, art history is not something, like, you typically, like, learn, like, when you're in elementary school even middle or high school i mean maybe some people's high schools but not mine um so i think i'm gonna kind of hold off on art history for now because every time we kind of do art history like i'll show you guys another book that i think is a little bit better because it's shorter but yeah so we really never even got to book two but i still think they're really good um resources especially if you're doing an artist study you can break these out you know and see I don't know if they have the artist. Yeah, I think they, I wonder if you can look in the back by the artist. Raphael, I guess you can to see. Yeah, Hockney, okay. So yeah, so those, um, I, I did, like I don't show anything on my channel that I don't recommend. If I don't book, then I usually donate it or um, mm -hmm. try to sell it back to like half price books. I don't keep books I don't like. So this is Why is Art Full of Naked People by Susie Hodge. So this book, we did get through most of it for art history um, because we didn't read like a, so sometimes we just read like a tiny section. So for like for this, like one day we might just read this and then the next time we might just read that or that. Like I didn't have us do too much and this actually worked out pretty good. I don't know if you get that much information reading like such a small part, but I think you do. I mean, because being, you know, my daughter's only nine. So for a nine year old or eight year old, whatever, when she we were doing this, it's like, I think a little bit of art history is a good amount. Like I don't, some kids may like it. My daughter just doesn't, she's not a history person. And I'm, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think this book is pretty cool. Okay, and then another art history book that I bought for third grade, but to be honest with you, we started it and we really didn't finish it either. But this book we will have forever. Like it will be something that, um, you know, you can use. Like this is, this is I think actually for adults. Um, it goes through all the times of art, periods of art. And what I like about this book, a lot of DK, it's color coded, you know, by the time frame. So this book we really didn't use as much as I thought we would because we had so much other stuff that we just, I kind of keep pushing our history aside because we just, or I, like I'd rather do like artwork with her at this age because she's not really interested in it. So I don't want to like force her. I do like doing like that workbook I showed you guys, like the Van Gogh like art artist study, but if it's like a small amount of like an artist study where it's more like a workbook, but just reading about our history as much as I would like to dedicate more time to it, we just never usually do. But this book is a really good resource for just art all through time. And yeah. Okay, so the last books that I have to show you guys are more like picture books that you can use, like if you're doing an artist study, you can use these alongside with it. Or if you're studying the elements of art, you can use them. So this is a new one. This is Fiona Robinson, The Bluest of Blues, Anna Atkins in the first book of photographs. So Anna Atkins um, did these, um, did the photography like this, sometimes people call them like sun prints. 
and she was the first person to make a book with photography and you can buy this paper we've done them before and the sun print paper um, and then i plan to buy some more so we're actually going to use this book for fourth grade we're going to read it together and then i'm going to buy that paper so we can do some of those prints and learn about this um, artist. This is what they look like. You put them out in the sun. Cyanotypes, cyanotypes. And I didn't read this book yet. So yeah, this is, I did these in college too, when I took photography. Cyanotypes, yep, beautiful. Okay, and this one actually is made for adults, but I have it in our art section, Frida Kahlo. And some people are like way more conservative about what art they show to their kid. I'm not, like I don't mind her looking at like nude, nude sculptures and paintings because I take her to museums and you will see that in museums. Some people are more, you know, they don't like to show their kids stuff like that. So if you're like that, then you wouldn't want this book. Um, it is for adults, but if you're if you're like we, I, I do want to do a Fr Frida Kahlo study, so we're definitely going to be using this book um, for that study. And then these um, just cute little thin books. This is Picasso and Van Gogh. These are just really simple. I think I got these at thrift stores. This one's actually really just a picture book. You don't really, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, this one, I love the cover. My name is Georgia, portrait by Jeanette Winter. We have another book. Um, I think we have Jane Goodall by her picture book biography. This one I really like. It's a picture book, um, of course, and all the illustrations. But I really like the way the artist, um, I think she really understands George O'Keefe's work. Like, and I really like, I really liked reading this book. So if you're if we're, if we do a Georgia O'Keeffe study, we're gonna break this book out, read it again, and then this um, these are ones I have to recommend, and I have more, but I didn't want this video to be like super long, but I just brought a few. So when you're doing that elements book, how to teach art to children, or you're just studying the elements in general, these are the books I was talking about. I like to include. Um, so when you're studying shapes, this is Tana Hoban, um, Primary Colors. Or color red, yellow, or blue by Tana Hoban. Tana Hoban's awesome. These are also kind of old. Um, a lot of them are wordless, if not all of them. And it's kind of like reminds me of this book, Press Here. And it's just like shows all the colors that's in the image. It's just simple. I love books like this. Like, oh my gosh, like, um, it's just very artsy and simple. And then shapes. I got all of these like used on like eBay. I don't even know if they're still in print anymore, but you can definitely find them online. I'll link them if I can find them on Amazon. So yeah, you could like, this whole page could be like an art lesson because you talk about, like you ask your child, what do you, what shapes do you see in this image? And then, you know, triangles, rectangles, you know, stars, hearts, circle. Well, then you could t you could make a whole project. Okay, like let's make a collage of all the shapes you found in this image. You can like make a whole art lesson on books like this. This is why I love picture books um, to go with art lessons. This one's just um, so Eric Carl is really awesome for when you're doing collage because pretty much every single one of his books are collage, and so you can read this before you do a collage lesson. And then your child will just be inspired by it. So this is a mix-up chameleon. And this book, you could also use it for a color study. Um, I love how it's like color-coded and like look at the rainbow, like um, even when you're studying um, Roy G. Biv. Or I don't think, I don't know if it, let's see. Anyway, um, so yeah, texture. When you're doing texture from the elements, there's a million things you can do with books like that. And this one's just fun. You could use it when you're studying circle. 
And I just like it because it just like has your child be creative and interactive and it's just so simple. Irv Tole, Irv Tole, he's French. <laughs> Press here. This is this was one of my daughter's favorite books when she was like a toddler. But I never think kids are too old for any book. And I love this book, how you press it and it tells you, great, you know, press it again. Um, you know, and then he has, oh my gosh, he has so many good books. If you look, if you Google his name or look on Amazon for his name, like you can almost just have all of his books. Like, um, yeah, and so you could use this for when you're teaching primary codes. So yeah, you could go on and on. Yeah, so I really hope you guys like this video. Um, since I created my new channel, I really wanted to do another video on all of my art books. And then if anything changes, I'll do another video. But for now, that's what we're doing for fourth grade. And that's what I've been doing since kindergarten. So thanks so much for watching, subscribing, and liking my videos. I really, really appreciate it. Bye.